है एवरी वन सो टिल अवर लास्ट वीडियो वी हैव कवर्ड अवर अमेरिकन लिटरेचर पेपर एंड नाउ आई एम मूविंग ऑन टू इंडियन राइटिंग इन इंग्लिश विच इज़ पेपर थर्ड सो द फर्स्ट टाइटल आई एम कवरिंग टूडे इज सरोजिनी नायडू एज नाइटिंगल ऑफ इंडिया द हिंदी लिटरेचर स्टूडेंट्स कैन ऑल्सो गेट बी बेनिफिटेड बाई दिस वीडियो बिकॉज सरोजिनी नायडू इज एन हिंदी एज वेल एज इंग्लिश राइटर ऑल्सो so the contents we will cover today are like this first of all about sarojini naidu then naidu as nightingale of india and at last conclusion so here is about sarojini naidu first of all she born on 13th february 1879 in hyderabad hyderabad state british india and died on 2nd march 1949 at the age of 70 in lucknow united provinces dominion of india her nationality was indian a political party was indian national congress by occupations she was a political activist and as well as poet her nickname was bharat ki bulbul and her language was english genre was lyric poetry and notable works are like this the golden threshold which is a very famous poem and the bird of time Here are some quotes by uh, Sarojini Naidu. First is, "If you are stronger, you have to help the weak." And next is, "A country's greatest greatness lies in its undying ideals of love and sacrifice that inspires the mothers of the race." So the uh, oh, uh, totally we will cover fifteen points in. Um, night as uh, sarojini naidu as nightingale of india and the first one is her genius to compose short poems which is lyrics and songs sarojini naidu wrote no epic dramatic or narrative poetry nor any blank verse she had no aptitude flair or talent for them her genius strays into composing composing short poems lyrics and songs not even sonnets although she wrote 10 3 of which which is the lotus the salutation to my father's spirit and imperial delhi are good enough her genius lay essentially in lyrics of which she wrote many she is not a maid poet she had started singing at the age of 13 because she felt instinctively that she could not help doing it she uh, verb uh, warbled because she must and had composed more than 3000 lines by the time she was 13 not a mean achievement her heart would be stirred emotionally in such moments she would instinctively be inspired to express herself and she would do it in numbers that came to her naturally all this would occur in happy innocence without having any purpose or end in view consequently she remains a lyricist throughout without much of a distinct growth of poetic personality as there is a scene in her uh, brother um, harindranath chattopadhyay next is about her work is marked by delicate fancy and haunting melody sarojini naidu is a lyricist as such her work is marked by a delicate fancy and haunting music she has exhibited high workmanship and material dexterity in the composition of her poems her poems are golden cadence uh, cadences in silken worms silken terms dealing in scintillating and dazzling images she shows in her art the influence of keats shelley but her art is not derivative it is the outcome of complete absorption with what she has studied with interest and their echoes in her poetry are indirect and subtle she is she it is said once dreamed that she would be the keats of india her dream remained unfulfilled nothing 
notwithstanding certain images left behind her are sensuous mythical and colorful like those of kids a new world of similes metaphors and images with oriental uh, luxuriance is discovered in her the following two images are uh, kitsian in nature and are in example on her part to out kids himself the lines are like this a cast marks on the azure brows of heaven the golden moon burns sacred solemn bright this is taken from lily and next lines are like this moonlight tangled meshes of perfume where the clustering terrace guard the squirrel's slumber where the deep woods glimmer with the jasmine's bloom next slide is about a poetry with the themes of love nature and the indian pageant sarojini naidu po- uh, poetry exhibits a general feeling of aliveness of life with all its variety its color its beauty and a general sense of uh, not only the joy of it but also of its poignant pathos major themes of her poetry consist of the simple joys and hopes and fears and lives of the common folk in town and country the irresistible fascination which nature particularly at spring time cast over her the aches and the ecstasies of love the ever recurrent challenge of a suffering and loss to the human spirit of death to life these are her favorite themes and the return and she returns to them again and again in spite of the fact that they sometimes overlap and are not mutually exclusive next is about romantic element in her poetry so uh, she is a romanticist like the one of the elizabethan period she like the poets of the elizabethan period enjoys discovering and flaunting new words new rhymes uh, rhythms new cadences new expression people singing and people wearing ear rings she was it uh, as it were a dreamer born in a dreamless age a romantic born in an unromantic era her poetry is ornate ornate we all know what is ornate so her poetry mostly is ornate and her poetic style is jeweled and exuberant while toru dat who uh, preceded her got in a simple and transparent style sarojini naidu ex- uh, exalted in flamboyant highly ornamental and figurative style which comprises plenty of similes metaphors symbols and images etc and sometimes her thought or feeling which uh, she tries to express gets blurred if not altogether lost in a profusion of words mostly adjectives substan- uh, substantives and in rhetoric so her poetry is on it next is about bird like quality of song this quality is especially to be felt in poems like the fairy fancies to my children uh, and the flute player of brindavan she longed to use her own words to be a wild free thing of the air like the birds with a um, with a in my heart it is an ideal which life did not permit her always to realize for she turned sometimes to themes as in to india and the royal tombs of golconda wherein a bird like quality would be impossible or if possible hardly suitable but that this quality was not altogether de- uh, dead is demonstrated from the flute player of brindavan which appears in her last volume next is command on language and meter she possessed a remarkable 
command both of the poetical resources of the English language as well as the subtle points of its idiom. Sarojini Naidu had a full and perfect command of the English language which was foreign to her. She has equally a unique gift of feeling for English meters and English prosody. Her poems exhibit a delicate and sensitive ear trend in the best poetic tra uh, tradition. They display a prosodical uh, correctness and regularity which seldom if ever becomes merely mechanical. Though she follows the main and great English poetical tradition in diction and prosody, her, po uh, her style is her own and gives us the impression of the individuality, a fact which was noted by Mr. Simons. She hardly imitates any particular English poet or belongs to the school of any one master or follows the formula of any one particular group. She gathers the juice of native as well as foreign flowers and turns into the honey of her poems. Next is dominant note in her work is joy, not pain. She regards life as a mingled web of rainbows and romance, of sunlight and starlight, of death and deprivation. Life brings many and wonderful lights. It also brings shadows, but the dominant note of her work is joy, not pain. Its dominant feature light, not darkness. For she unequivocally uh, accepts life on terms on life's terms, even when the songbird's wing is broken, its spirit is unbroken and triumphant. The lines are like this: Behold, I rise to meet the destined spring, and scale and stars upon my broken wing. Her work is life and light are supreme, not death and darkness. The tints of twilight rarely deepen into shades of night. She takes death in her stride and accepts it too. And naturally, for to accept life is to accept death as well. There are poems in which she seems to be crushed by pain and grief. But the poems into which she has poured most of her poetic power and spirit are those in which there is note of defiance and of victory over her circumstances. Her dominant note in poetry is one of courage. She, like her own old woman, lonely and bent and blind, lifts a brave heart to the jest of the race. Grief is uh, but a shadow which flints, flits over the surface of life but fails to darken its deeper recesses. Next is her contribution to poetry. If not all poems, at, la at least some of her folk songs, that is, The Snake Charmer, The Cradle Song, Bengal Sailors, Song of Radha, The Milk Mad, and Village Songs from the Bird of Time. Her songs of music like Alabaster to My Fairy Fancies and her poems like The Lily, Indian Dancers, The Queen's River to a Buddha uh, seated on a lotus, Raksha Bandhan, a song of the Khyber Pass, and uh, her songs of life and death like the lotus bells, the pearls, the flute player of Vrindavan and her songs of the springtime like spring, uh, champak blossoms, June sunset and a few of her love lyrics in the, uh, in, uh, love lyrics in the temple will always constitute her good poetry and will continue to haunt the readers forever by offering before them an irresistible charm. So these all are the contribution by her to the poetry. Uh, 
her contribution to english poetry in general and indo anglian poetry in a particular is twofold her creation of new metrical uh, rhythms and setting some indian folk song tunes to them recreation of the color beauty romance and pageantry of indian life the country's soul and in english works next is her power of dramatic interpretation uh, her ready sympathy of feeling and imagination lies at the root of her power of dramatic interpretation the song of radha vasant panchami the uh, damyanti to nana nana and suti are all examples of this sympathy woven into dramatic form next is descriptive power she like uh, tanison when she describes does not introduce too much detail and knows what to omit she adopts the method of severe selection and focuses the light on the really significant features describing them freshly and effectively with the result that the reader sees a uh, not only a picture but a picture that is clear and pleasing instances of her descriptive power may be found in the indian gypsy night nightfall in the city of hyderabad june sunset or indian dancers nearly all the songs of spring time and the flower flowering um, year are marked by happy touches of description the bengal sailor contain another kind of description where she dis, uh, distinctions between a number of delicately described colors are brought out with the help of apt similes the description is occasionally couched in words which are not only vivid and skillful, skillful but also poetical and yet so apt as to seem quite natural as in fireflies wavering aerial dancers dances in the fragile rhythms of trickling gold this are these lines are from a spring a song in spring and another line we get another effectively little picture from the same poem wild birds that sway in citron branches drink with the rich red honey of spring next is lack of intellectual vigor and reflective power her poetic poetry is not remarked uh, is not marked by intellectual vigor vigor is a strength you know her strength does not lie in reflective power or intellectual pith on the other hand she is at times sentimental it is not her aim to grapple with life's problems as does the philosopher or the abstract thinker there are in fact no problems for her to be pondered over she only introduces situations that make her nerve tingle and stir her into quivering song life is not a riddle for her to be solved it is a miracle to be celebrated and sung about its endless variety excites her its colors dazzle her its beauty intoxicates her her response to it is quick and it is not uh, stick light with a pale cast of thought this lends the gift of perennial youthfulness to her poetry with the aid of which she exercises a spell over young and if uh, impressionable hearts and revitalize those who have suffered defeat and disillusionment her poetry serves as a sort of tonic which takes her readers out to breathe in the clear fresh air of life's elemental experiences its recurrent joys and woes its lavish gifts and its mysterious daniels so we find lack of intellectual vigor and reflective power in her poetry 
Next is desire for beauty. Although she was always eager for beauty and longed to write one of poem, even one line which she could feel was both beautiful and great, she was no ideal singer, intent merely upon the perfection of her own song. She did not believe in the creed of art for art's sake. When it is taken to mean that the artist should be quite indifferent so pra uh, to practical and moral issues and the art is more important than life, she did not rest content with the attempt to create pure beauty untouched by the active interests of life and one's fellow man. She never avoided casting a glance of life. Next is ideal of service to the country. Mrs. Naidu expresses her in her song both the joy and the song and the desire for beauty and the ideal of service to her country or mankind. It is these two ideals which sustain her and which she follows throughout. Her first ideal is set forth in the final stanza of garden wherein she has asked for the gardens of love and truth and the poems ends with the prayers for the third and supreme reward. Lines are like this. For me, O my master, the rapture of song. Her second ideal finds expression the fairy isle of Janjira in which her duty calls her. Into the strife of th throng and the tumult, the war of sweet love against folly and wrong, where brave deeds carry the sword of battle, the solace of faith to the lips and falter, the succor of hope to the hands that fail, the tidings of joy that peace shall triumph, when truth shall conquer and love prevail. So this is ideal of service to the country. Showing ideal uh, of service to the country. Next is and the last one. Small output and short canvas. The volume of her poetry is not large. Nor is her poetical, poetic range wide. Her poetic canvas is a small. A mere two square inches of ivory. Like Jane Austen's. The total output consists of 180 short poems and the poetic form only one, which is lyrics, comprising songs and a few sonnets. And the life's vision is well limited and confined, in so far as its range does not go beyond love longings, a few romantic fancies and dreams, and a few common simple joys and sorrows. Her genius, says Dr. Dastu, was not as a roaring flame, it was a brilliant incadences that dispelled the darkness with a, uh, with a warm and cheery luminosity. Uh, her poetic genius was neither deep nor far-ranging, but it was a rare vein all the same from which poured out rich orb, which are indeed few of her effusions, which are not gems of purest ray ceiling. At last, I would like to let you know about the conclusion of this video. She was, means Sarojini Naidu was, an important figure of India's struggle for independence from colonial rule. Naidu's work as poet, earned her the sobriquet Nightingale of India. Thank you for now and bye to all. Uh, let's meet in our next video.